so let's start with the first talk uh, that's on biometric basics so i'll be just covering very uh, quickly about the basics things which you should be doing so as to get the best uh, measurements so as to avoid any errors uh, what is the bi biometry biometry as we all know is a process of measuring various physical parameters and using these parameters of the eye to determine the ideal intraocular lens power which would be ideal for that patient of yours so first and foremost important thing is gathering a good data so what is the essential data in this is your axial length and the corneal power which we measure by keratometry measurements and the additional uh, inputs which can be taken are your ac depth your lens thickness refraction the predicted pores of refraction the white to white and the age which are usually considered in holiday uh, holiday two formulas as well as remember these three, four parameters the keratometry ac depth lens thickness and refraction have a very very important role in predicting your elp or the effective lens position which is the actual position of the intraocular lens which is you are trying to predict before the surgery in for that particular patient so who should be doing the biometry remember you are the surgeon you are responsible for your patient so ideally you should be doing it for all your patients but if you do not have the time if you have a busy practice ensure that your assistant whoever is doing it for you is well trained to pick up any anomalies and inform them to you or he is able to take care of all the parameters or the machine related fallacies or the calculation related fallacies which may arise when should you do it it is a matter of great timing as well you should have ample time to calculate the il power time to counsel the patient if there are odd pass or what type of refractive error does he want does he want an emetropia because emetropia may not be the target always and it will give you time to arrange for specific powers which are out of the range which are not the normal remember as it said emetropia is not your goal always you have to take into consideration patient's needs and what his, his, are his requirements so the first thing is keratometry or the estimation of the true corneal power and a good k reading is required for directly using it in the alpha formulas for indirectly estimating the elp and as well as for controlling your astigmatism which is happening during the surgery as well as a pre operative astigmatism which the patient may have to counter that as well most of the instruments or the keratometers are what you are doing is measuring the anterior radius of curvature and then presuming these refractive index the core overall refractive index of cornea it is actually calculating the power of the cornea or the true power of the cornea but now it is we have lot of armamentariums of machines which have come up which are able to give us an assumption or an estimation of the posterior corneal radius also curvature also so we have these armamentarium i'm not going to go into details of these any of these machines but remember i i'm just going to talk about the tips which you should take when you are doing your measurements please always whatever instrument you're using calibrate it regularly at, cal at regular intervals ensure that whatever measurements you're doing you do it in a dark room with a good tear film and untouched cornea you should not not have done any procedure don't be in a hurry to do first an ablation and then you start with your thing or if you've done an ablation please don't do your keratometry on the same day please reschedule the visit of the patient ensure that there is other eyes occluded because that ensures the axial readings or an axial centration of the center most part of the cornea being uh, measured take average or multiple readings if there is an evident scarring which is which is uh, involving most of the cornea then you can use the other eye readings but with the other with the newer modalities of measurements they will be able to give you some approximate uh, values for the measurements remember most of the corneas are curved regularly and similar between the two individuals two eyes of the individual 99% of your readings are between 40 to 48 diopters so if you have variations beyond this recheck 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 extreme values more than 40 less than 40 or more than 48 recheck is asymmetry between the two eyes of greater than 1 recheck if there is asymmetrism within the eye of greater than 1.5 recheck do it on different days by different people involved and on different machines where all these machines as i told you will come into play for the next input parameter we have the axial length for which we have the tools the ultrasonic biometers and the optical biometers how do the ultrasonic biometers work obviously it is basically based on the ultrasound waves being traversed from very diff different ocular structures and the distance traversed is the, thereby calculated from the echoes which are reflected again the tips for this is please always calibrate your instruments set the velocity settings correctly the gain settings properly appropriately a very very gentle touch if you are using a contact biometer a contact uh, probe ensure that there is no indentation happening because that is a major source of error look for good spikes what are good spikes i'll just show you in the next uh, uh, the diagrammatic representation of that 
ensure that there's Excel alignment, which is very, very important when you're doing measurements with any biometer. And in this, for ultrasonic, by asking to look into the fixation lights. Again, take average or multiple readings with a standard deviation between each reading less than 0.06 millimeters. Repeat if the difference between the two eyes is more than 0.3. Preferably, always record before or take measurements before dilating the pupils. Again, this ensures your Excel measurements. Avoid using any ointments, or if the patient is on ointments, please ensure that the readings are taken after some few hours of installation of the ointment. So as I was talking about the uh, spikes, ensure that each uh, spike is tall and steeply rising from your baseline. The retinal spike is almost of the same reflectivity as your lens and the posterior and the scleral spikes, and there should not be any small spikes immediately in front of the uh, retinal spike. There should be a tall scleral spike immediately after your retinal spike and with the attenuating orbital fat spikes. If these uh, attenuating orbital fat spikes are not there, it indicates that your probe is growing through the optic nerve and not through the fovea. Remember that. So these orbital attenuating fat spikes are also very important in your scan. So what are the pros of using an ultrasound machine? Obviously, it is easy to perform and cost effective and works for the all types of cataracts even the densest or a total cataract, which may not be case for, with some of the optical biometers. The disadvantages obviously are there. It is misalignment issues are more common as compared to optical biometers. Risk of abrasion may be there with the contact ultrasound, uh, contact probe, and the risk of infection is always there because it's a contact procedure. And in, again, in the contact ultrasound, there is a risk of corneal compression leading to a falsely low exit length. So whether this can be improvised by just a mere investment of a Pregel's shell, which will help you in going into the immersion mode of ultrasound. This shell is basically uh, looks like this, where the water bath is created within shell and the probe is immersed into this water bath, where the water is filled up to a level of almost 60, 70 to 80%. And while doing immersion uh, biometry, remember that the patient is comfortable. So you can either keep the patient supine or even in the reclining position, align the mark on the shell properly with the probe inside, which is submerged in the water bath there. Fill the chamber adequately without any air bubbles. That is important. Ensure that there's no leakage. So overflow is not required, should not be there. Ask again for the patient to look in the fixation light. That's important to ensure the, uh, that the alignment is being done in the exhale direction and make sure that the machine is in immersion mode. This is the most important thing to remember. Many a times this happens that the, your if your uh, operator is doing, running late or if somebody else is measuring, your optometrist is doing a review, he has not changed the mode from the contact mode to the immersion mode. And that will give you erroneous readings and leading to a faulty IL part calculations. And la you landing up with a refractive surprise the next day itself. So the thing is, obviously, as compared to a contact ultrasound, this makes your uh, measurements more reliable, more accurate. There's no corneal compression. So obviously, the exit length is not being falsely recorded. And again, the other advantages of the ultrasound are there that is going to work for all types of cataract. And the only disadvantage for this, I would say, is that there is a risk of patient getting wet. Now, next is your optical biometers, basically, which are using infrared diode lasers, which are based on various principles. We have PCI based, we have OLC, OLCR based, we have uh, swept source OCT based, various optical machines, uh, biometer machines are available to us. The basic thing in these machines is the resolution is far, is far, far much better because of wavelength, which we are using is the infrared rays. And so if you look at the accuracy, obviously with the A scan, it is somewhere between 0.12 to 0.24, which is markedly improved with using an optical biometer. The tips for this is ensuring a moist ocular surface, ensuring alignment, a slight midraces, especially in the cases of PSCs, in these cases may be helpful, and choosing the correct mode. Obviously, the advantages of this machine is very high reliability, observer independent, fast, precise, and same machine can give you various measurements which are required for your as input parameters. There's no physical contact, non-contact procedure, no anesthesia, no corneal compression, and you're measuring exactly along the visual axis. The only disadvantage is it's expensive and it may not work in the cases of total cataracts. In significant axial opacities, now the swept source OCTs do work in most of the cases. So what next after gathering, you have to would start employing some formulas. We have an arm imitarium of formulas based on virgins, based on ray tracing principles, based on artificial intelligence. And there are statements which are coming up, use this for short eyes, use this for long eyes. But remember not to use this. You can use any IL formulas. I'll be talking on your next talk about optimization. What is more important, but what is most important not to use SRK2. Please, this is an obsolete formula. Don't use this. And just an example of this, look at this. 
there's a 22 exit length, there's a 21.98, and with the same formula, the difference which we are getting with a difference of 0 0.01 millimeter, you get a difference of one diopter, which is huge, tremendous difference for the patient. So th there are five different steps at which this error happens with SRK2, so please don't use this formula. In the end, I would just say, please, whenever you're doing biometries, do it for both eyes. Always use the correct mode. Remember, most individuals have similar excellence in each eye. So if you have variations, repeat your, uh, recheck your readings. Similarly, most corneas are regularly curved. So if you have variations beyond this range, please recheck. Look for asymmetry. And if the asymmetry is occurring on different days, on different, rechecking also, then think of the causes of asymmetries, which could be amblyopia, stephaloma, any covert corneal, corneal scarrings. Repeat the measurements in these cases, as I've already talked about. Also, if there's a difference more, more than 0.3 or uh, between the uh, fellow eyes in terms of excellence, or the difference of mean corneal power more than 0.9 between the two eyes, if the difference of the emetropic implant power of the two eyes is more than one diopters. Again, repeat on different days, different machines. Use multiple formulas so as to cut down on your, uh, bring, uh, so as to go closer to accuracy. And remember, if you have to do any adjustments because of any complication during the surgeries, please remember to change the uh, bag versus sulcus. And don't remember, it's not 0.5 diopter for every eye. It will depend upon the excellent or the rating. So please remember to remember this. Practically, you can remember it by rule of nine. And especially if you're changing your IOL model, again, you have to recalculate. You cannot use the same, uh, uh, a different company IOL and use the same calculations and same power for this different company IOL. And different A constants are also remembered uh, there for if you have done measurements from an optical or an ultrasonic. If your IOL model, uh, the package doesn't provide you that, ask the company person to give you that if you're using the same time of IOL for all your patients. Audit your results scientifically and record your mean errors and use them to optimize your results. And they are suboptimalized, which my other uh, co-instructors would be talking about. So these are those conditions which will be discussed in the next subsequent talks. Uh, I'll next shift to my uh, other talk, which is on optimization, which I'll be talking in continuity of this. Uh, any questions from the audience, please? A very concise, a quick question can we allow? <coughs> no? no? Then Dr. Nitin, please shift to next talk. Yeah. So optimization. What is optimization and is it the need of the R? Yeah, I would say it is the need of the R. It is a way to go if you have to become a cataract refractive surgeon. We have, as I have already said in my previous slide, we have armamentarium of IL power formulas which are working quite well. It's not that they're not working well, but remember each IL formula has its limitations and that is why we have statements. SRKT is good for long eyes. Hoffer Q is good for short eyes. So let's take an example. So these are the input parameters which I've put in. The A constant which I have put as given by the per company person, but look, the range of variation which I get with using different formulas. None of the formulas is even closer to each other. Every formula is 0.5, one diopter away from each other. So what to do? What should I do? What if I choose incorrectly? So either I'll have a patient like this, or sometimes even a patient who comes fighting like this. This may be a family scenario. I've done an excellent surgery. My cornea is pristinely clear. I have a very, very quiet eye, but patient is really, really unhappy and is on, on to you. So this is because you have ended with a large refractive surprise. So now what do I do? I just pray, please, Jini, ajao. I need something. So this is what is optimization. Optimizer says, yes, Jini for me, he's going to bring magic into my practice. Because I need to hit the target right, right dead, dead at this point. So optimization, as I said, is the way to go. And why does we need to optimize? There are so many sources of error, which could be human errors, but there are certain errors which are calibration errors. Maybe my machine is showing calibration, but it has not been well calibrated over days. So I'm not checking for calibration of the machine every day. The machine, company people say, okay, you can check the calibration maybe after three months. You need to recalibrate and call us over. But maybe it is not like that. So there are certain inherent errors which are going amiss from my mind. There are certain inherent errors due to assumption of speed of sound, refractive index of the cornea, etc. Other things. So the NTN, this is because the NTN posterior segments of the eye are not proportional. So don't presume that the speed of light is, as I am presumed when I'm doing ultrasonic measurements, speed of sound is going to be the same throughout as, okay, this much is the NTN segment and this is the posterior segment. This is not the same case for every eye. Then we have the IOL design features. Okay, every IOL has its own design of haptics, overall size, shape, rigidity of the haptic haptic junction, but we cannot predict that how it is going to interact when it is sitting in the capsular bag, what is the ELP, we are trying to predict, but still we cannot be 100% sure of that. So obviously that is also another sort of inherent error which we cannot totally exclude. And then we have our surgical own technique, which is going to induce some uh, errors, which are inherent, which are a constant feature there. 
which could be the excess size, the centration, the way we have placed the eye oil, how much viscoelastic we were able to remove from all the places in the eye. Uh, if we are using sutures, what is the suturing technique? What is the wound healing for that particular patient? How much post-operative steroids would we use? How did the patient's eye behave regarding the wound healing? So all these things obviously are also going to create source errors. So if you grossly you look for any alpha formula, the three things which the when we are doing we, which we need to feed into that formula is your egg length, the keratometry values, and the lens constant. So it is this lens constant which actually determines all these variables, all these errors taken to are taken into account by that lens constant. So what is this lens constant? These are lens constants which are provided by the manufacturers to us, which are based on certain empirical values, based on their theoretical considerations, based on certain limited clinical data which they have, and experience with similar designs, and they will come back again, their uh, r &E section will come up and will give us a, a, a IL constants based on the sticker on the package of the IL. And, but remember these constant, although the word is a constant, but they are still not constant, they are variables. So they are going to vary for each formula, each design of the IL, each patient, they can and so what is the starting point for us in optimization is is this constant which is being given by the manufacturer to us and they have been given different names SRK in the different formulas SRK T SRK based formulas use name it as a constant but the holidays uh, formulas label it as suggest factors Hopper Q names is as a pseudophagic ACD and the Hagee's as A0, A1, A2 depending on the which formula which version of uh, Hagee's you are using so what are the ingredients for uh, optimizing your a uh, constants the same things, the preoperative keratometry, the preoperative exit length. I, now, the next thing which is important now, it is IL power and the model which you are going to use and the post-operative refractive error which you have from your previous experience of your previous cases. Also, the other things when you have to optimize, please remember, single surgeon has to optimize. You cannot take data of other people and optimize your constants. So, single surgeon, single lens model, single biometry machine, one style of surgery, you cannot have a temporal incision and superior incision being combined and to take your results, to calculate your own uh, uh, constants. In the back placement of IR, you cannot use in the sulcus and in the back placement, both the cases together, no. And a standardized refraction of way the post-operative refraction is being done for every patient, that also has to be standardized. So let's take a basic example using the simplest SRK formula. We just rearrange this equation to get this A constant. This is how we calculate it, okay? Now we calculate this for a case of for a series of cases, average these values, and use this A constant now, which we have averaged, taking all those considerations of using one IOL model, one biometry machine, one type of uh, surgery, one type of uh, 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 data, and one type of refractive uh, way of doing refractions. And we calculate the, that A constant and use this for our own IOL power calculation for that particular type of surgeries. So usually 24 or five or more cases are needed for meaningful results. And so what we are doing is basically back calculating everything yourself for your case, okay? And obviously, so as to get the best results and reach at the top, at the target. But remember these calculations for the complex formulas, that was a simple example I gave for you for uh, SR, uh, SR formula, which is the simplest. But that formula is anyway obsolete as I told you, SRK. The first surgeon's factor, which I has told you is a part of for your holidays formulas. Obviously, look at this, this calculations. Oh God, I'm going to scratch my mind. Will I be able to do it? This involves a lot of mathematics into it. So it's not possible to do this manually. We have another method by Estudomus, who also is doing, trying to predict this error. And here he is not going to give you the actual A constant, but he's going to give you the prediction error based on your measured values of your refraction and the predicted post-operative refractions. And here he's asking you to do uh, take an average of almost 100 eyes. And if the prediction error is going towards hyperopia, he's saying, uh, asking you to increase your IL constant. And if it's going towards myopia, he's asking you to decrease your uh, uh, IL, uh, uh, A constant values. And for every 0.1 diopter, I'm just giving you an example here, for 0.1 diopter of hyperopic error, if you use the Hoffer cues, he says, please uh, increase it by 0 0.06. For holidays, increase it by 0 0.06 again. And for SRKT, increase it by 0.12. But this is another method, but which requires almost again 100 eyes and again requires you to do a lot of manual calculations. So the limitations of this manual paper and pen optimization is, as I showed you, very complex situations, very complex equations, high possibilities of your manual unnoticed errors which may come into there and a time consuming task. So what do we have available next? We have more sensible optimization strategies, which is 
using the biometry machine itself or using a separate software. So now what do we do? A biometry machine will give you this option. You can save your initial data in your biometry machines, enter the additional parameters which you require for optimization, that is your surgeon name, the IL power, the model used, enter the post-operative fraction, and the machine will calculate this for you and update the relevant A constants. Again, you will require those many cases for this to be done. But is there an even simpler solution to this? Yes, there is. You can use an independent software, independent of the biometers. It is because you know you can work much easier and much faster on your PCs, which you carry everywhere with you. Okay, and you can easier back up your data, transport and export your data anywhere from this. It is much, much faster and there is no memory overload issues which will be there with their biometers. So be smart, use the software, and we have two optimizers available. Dr. Hill spreadsheet and lens constructor optimizer, which is given by one of my co-instructors who is not there with us now because he totally gone into the fields of AI and he's developing more formulas and more work on it. So Dr. Saurabh has given this lens constructor optimizer, uh, who was one of the co-instructors who started this course actually initially when it was started in 2015. So this is the spreadsheet, how the spreadsheet of LCO version 5.1 looks like. Now, this is what is the conventional optimization I've talked about till now. We have taken the statistic A constant by the manufacturer and which was 118.8 for the ultrasound and it gave us by this back calculations the results of 119.1 to me now can i go beyond this convention and personalize everything for my needs okay we have two more tools for this the dynamic IOL optimizer which is again and now these two are paid tools which are not freely available to your softwares so this is one is dio which is again developed by saurabh and the other is by dr holiday which is a holiday IOL consultants which actually personalize everything according to your as a surgeon and it may, what it does, like I, I'm just giving you an example of DIO, because it maintains your database, it performs extensive data analysis, producing the optimized IL power for each patient. Now you need not calculate your IA constant for every patient. It will directly, after putting in all parameters, after using the best A constant for each type of eye, it will have a data source for myopic eyes, it will have a data source for hyperopic eyes, it will have a data source for the normal emetropic eyes, it will have a data source for other types of erratic eyes with those with corneal scarrings and everything. So it will optimize your results according to the data source which it has. So it is a set of an artificial intelligence based tool again. A single usable IL power formula is, power will be provided to you at the end of the results once you have fed in the data. So everything is automated. So now just to uh, sum summarize, I would just say optimization, everybody would think, is it worth so much of effort? Yes, I would say is it, it's worth the effort. But just optimizing your A constants, as Warren Hill said, you can come to 0.5 diopters within 0.5 diopters in 70% of the cases and within one diopters in 90% of the cases. But if you use this personalization, personalization of the constants or personalization of the IL powers calculations with the DIO, using even an ultrasonic biometer, you are almost as close to 96% for, uh, for plus minus one diopters. And with the optical, you are almost within 99% of your results. So please, yes, it's worth the effort. Please optimize for every patient.